Welcome again, everyone, to our Caw Valley crossover, um, where we answer questions from you on Facebook Live. If you want to pose any of them with Matt Galloway, our KU beat writer, Ken Corbett, our K-State beat writer. I'm Kevin Haskin, along with producer engineer Eric Smith here in the Capitol Journal studio. Um, well, we're almost, I guess we're just about full phase into basketball at one school, another school caught wind finally of their bowl destination. Uh, not really a surprise in the Cactus Bowl the way everything fell out in terms of the Big 12 based on Oklahoma making it into the Final Four and everyone else out of the Final Four and then the pecking order was established. Uh, no real surprise, was there? No, not really. The only question is whether TCU would get into a New Year's Six Bowl and, and mm -hmm. once they got uh, dropped out of that and dropped down to the to the Alamo Bowl. I mean, that kind of put everyone else down a spot. And we kind of thought the Liberty Bowl was leaning towards Iowa State. You know, it's close. They haven't been to a bowl game in a few years. They're going to have a really strong following. So, you know, kind of came down for K-State then between the Cactus Bowl and maybe Horn and Dallas Bowl or maybe even that large spot. Uh, right. The Texas Bowl taking the Texas Longhorns was no surprise. <laughs> we expected that. So, you know, K-State has it was to be their eighth bowl in Arizona, so familiar ground, so it's going to be a long, expensive trip, so be interesting to see what kind of a following they get. I've heard ticket sales pre-bowl were not very good at all, so, mm -hmm. uh, but we'll see if it picks up, and, and maybe the strong finish the Cats have will generate a little more interest. Yeah, I think to some extent it will. I mean, there's a lot of fans who follow K-State football, take pride in the, the big bowl followings that Kansas State has developed a reputation for, and, and at has helped them get into particular games in the past. And how do they spend this preparation period, you think? I mean, I'm kind of wondering how much more you can maybe put on the plate of, of Skylar Thompson, if, if that's part of, of the preparation period, or if they just really, you know, try to get some young guys on the practice field or – or what is it they do here, and, and obviously try to get some guys healed up too. Yeah, well, it, it's a little hard to tell because we haven't been able to speak with Bill Snyder since the end of the season. So he did say on the Bull Teleconference Sunday that they took last week off, didn't do anything to get prepared for the finals, and, and after nine straight weeks of playing football in the Big 12 schedule, they needed a break, so I'm sure that was welcome. But, you know, traditionally he's used this time to get the young guys, you know, the, the redshirt freshmen, some of the young guys, a lot of work. But, again, and I don't know how the rules are changing this in contact during, you know, when classes are out of session and bowl prep, they might be able to do more contact now. But, you know, I'm sure he's going to use a couple of weeks to, you know, look at the young kids. And then as you get closer to the game a week or so out, they'll really start focusing more on, on UCLA and, and what they need to do in that game. But, you know, when you have this long, it gives you an opportunity to, to spread things out a little bit and work on a lot of different things. I'll be curious to see if Josh Rosen plays in this game. I mean, if he's going out for yeah. the draft, there there would be a strong possibility in my mind that he would not play given the position he's at. We've seen this happen with with guys that virtually play virtually any position in college football, skipping that bowl game. But it's not something that everybody does. It, it hasn't taken taken hold like that, but it, it's a possibility. It is, and when you're a prospective number one overall pick, you have to look at that, especially he has been injured. You know, he's mm -hmm. missed some time here late in the season with some injuries. You know, with the coaching change kind of throws things in the mix. His, his uh, offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach is the interim coach now, so, you know, he might feel a little more loyalty to him and, and want to, you know, play for him. We'll see how that happens. Chip Kelly will not be coaching the bowl game. Mm -hmm. It'll uh, be the offensive coordinator, so you know, see how that relationship is. He may feel a little more loyalty to him and want to, want to, you know, you know, play one last time for him. Jim Mora won't be coaching the game, so we won't have yeah, any, no. any post game antics. No, <laughs> and and I was surprised. Uh, a reporter on the Bull Teleconference Sunday asked Bill about that, mm. and, and he gave more of an answer than I would have expected. Instead of sloughing it off, you know, he didn't. He gave the reasons why one of those players made what was viewed a late hit. Didn't, you know, it totally in, inexcusable. Uh, excuse it, but uh, yeah, it's it's it hasn't been forgotten. Let's put it that way. Yeah, had a player slap at the football, as I recall, too, kind of to try to mess up the snap count. And, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, sometimes was, you have to reach into your it was a young yeah. player, deep bag. A to young find player, out. just it's enthusiastic out there for for not very long, trying to make a play. 
-hmm. Especially reaching into a deep bag. When does KU make another bowl appearance? Uh, you're really putting me on the spot here, aren't you? Uh, I, I don't know. I've, I've, I've seen some people, I don't know, just kind of wonder if it's, is KU basketball going to miss the NCAA tournament before KU football makes its next bowl game? I think that's an interesting proposition. I, I, I would think KU well, football. Not win the Big Twelve before that. Happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I've, I've, um, I've seen some people kind of throw that out there. I would, I would tend to believe that KU football, as dire as things are right now, would probably make a bowl before KU misses the tournament entirely. Yeah, it's been. Do. I mean, as you pointed out a few weeks ago in your column mm -hmm. about the consistency of. KU under Bill Self, I mean, it's been how long since they've missed the tournament? It's been remarkable. It's Roy Williams' yeah. first season. Yeah, yeah when they were on probation and couldn't go anyway. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it's been a been a remarkable streak that they're on. I believe it's now the longest streak in the in the country. So, um, And the last KU bowl bid was the same bowl that Kansas State's going to, by a different name, Insight.com Bowl, mm -hmm. in 2008, uh, the year after that Orange Bowl. Right? It'd be Minnesota, right? Yeah, yeah. so... Um, basketball, the Jayhawks have a ball game tonight, their annual trek over to the Sprint Center, and uh, a little odd that it's on a weeknight at the Sprint Center, but I guess they probably figure they can they can sell the place out or come close to it even on a on any night of the week or any day. Uh, playing a Washington team that's mm, pretty so-so, I would say, yeah. and, and under a first-year head coach. Yeah, 6-2, and two, and a, a head coach that's a Jim Beheim disciple and a, a coach that kind of deploys the same kind of zone that, that mm -hmm. KU saw against Syracuse on Saturday in Miami. And uh, Bill Self kind of had a, a funny moment at his news conference the other day where he said everything he thought would attack the zone well against Syracuse failed horribly. And so uh, they just kind of got into a stationary offense, and Devontae Graham scored yeah. 35 points Long for the second away. time. Yeah. So <laughs> that kind of worked out. But I, I think this is going to be a big game for Yudoka Azubuki because the zone really flustered him against Syracuse. He, he had uh, massive foul trouble for the first time really this season. We ended up seeing Clay Young for nine minutes in the first half because Mitch Lightfoot couldn't stay on the court either. Amazingly, Syracuse, and I think one of the biggest strategic screw-ups that I've seen since I've covered this, you know, KU didn't take, try to even take advantage of that at all. Their two primary bigs had two combined shots in the first half, and that was with Clay Young playing nine minutes at the five. So, uh, you know, Syracuse... He's tough, man. He is, yeah. yeah. No, he, he boxes out. He had a good assist. So um, I've kind of compared him to that, you know, emergency break if uh, there's an emergency and had glass. I don't even know what you call it. I did a horrible job of explaining it, but everybody knows what it is. Um, but, yeah, I think this is a big game for Yudoka Azubuki because if he has another bad game where he can't really figure out the zone, I mean, the only points he really scored were off of lob passes, and as Bill Self said, you don't. that's not something you really earn. That's just something you get by you know, mm -hmm. being God-gifted with being seven feet tall and having right. a point guard in Devontae Graham who can <laughs> uh, you know, throw darts at you. So uh, I think this is a big game for Yudoka. If, if he struggles again, I could see teams who are struggling to contain him shifting to a zone look if they have that in their bag of tricks and trying to do that to neutralize him. But you know, even if you do that, you've got the three-point prowess of KU, and Jim Beheim was kind of asked, you know, did you ever think about switching it up from the zone with how well KU was shooting from three-point range? They finished 11 for 31, and Devontae Graham had seven threes. And he said, well, did you see how the teams that played them man-to-man -man <laughs> struggled with them this year uh, shooting threes? So really, there's no blueprint for covering KU in that regard. And mm -hmm. it's almost like right now, you just kind of have to hope for them to have a bad shooting night. You were in the high school home of Clay Young last night. Do they have his picture up in big portrait? I didn't see that. No, okay. Lansing High School, which I, I learned is actually in Lansing. So you learn something new every day. But, uh, yeah, also don't trust Google when you Google a, the, the, a, a high school and it tells you it's in Leavenworth. You might want to double check with that. So maybe find a book. So <clears throat> Books? Wow. Books, yeah. What's that? Yeah. Uh, Great band band, too, at Was it? Was awesome. it? Awesome. One of the best. All right. Yeah, one of the oh, best high schools I've seen. Good to know. I might pop in at some point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, upstate <laughs> of South Carolina, or however you want to call this When state. I first saw that, I thought it was, I was like, University of Southern California, upstate. That doesn't make sense to me. There's two USAs. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, um, 
you know, every time I go to one of these games, I think, well, this has to be a better game than the last one. And I keep being proven wrong. <laughs> uh, I was struggling last night to find a way to describe this K-State non-conference schedule. I, I didn't think a lot of people in this generation would understand Mr. Whipple and Ultra Soft Charmin. So <laughs> I ended up with Pillowy Soft. Uh, it's been bad. I mean, yeah. you know, they had the one game against Arizona State, went to Vanderbilt Sunday, played a – Played a decent Vanderbilt team, won that game. I mean, they were favored. Big lead, lost it, held on. That was the most encouraging sign last night against Substate. They jumped out to a 14 nothing lead. You know, that's when you kind of take the, the foot off the pedal. They kept going. You know, they mm -hmm. kept going. Even at the end of the game, when the bench was in there, they expanded the lead. It went from 32 to 37 point final. So that was a good sign. But, yeah, it's, it's you know, it gets a little better. They play Tulsa. In Wichita on, on uh, Saturday, Tulsa is mm -hmm. four and four. Has a two point loss to Iowa State. Uh, the remainder of the non conference uh, at Washington. Well, play Washington State and Spokane. Washington State is six and one, and then Southeast Missouri four and four. But yeah, it's still you know I, I guess they're K State's eight and one, which is great. I guess they're gaining some confidence and and the veterans are playing well. But it's still you know. I don't know how good this team is because the competition has been so bad. Yeah, that's kind of what I gather too. And I watched watched that game last night, and it seemed like, I mean, it's rumored that Mr. Whipple's distant cousin is Bruce Weber, and it seemed as if he uh, he was somewhat pleased with the fact they came back from a Sunday game and were able to have that intense start where they got up, what, 27 to four? Was yeah, that the, yeah. the early getaway? But again, yeah, you just, yeah. I you think just Bill really Snyder, don't know. I think Bill Snyder is jealous of this non-conference schedule. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it, yeah, yeah. Um, well, they both played Vanderbilt, so. Yeah. That's true, yeah. yeah. And, the, and the basketball team won. They both had, yeah. had Vanderbilt, so that was, that was a better sign, I guess. So. <laughs> um, good three-point shooting, and it, does K-State have a variety of, Threats from that range, you think? They I do. Mean, I we're going to see better defenders come out on them, and, and yeah. then we'll see what happens. Yeah, but. And, and they've seen a lot of zone. I mean, Upstate played a lot of matchup zone. Mm -hmm. they've, they've seen that quite a bit. But Kamau Stokes has really taken a step forward. Everyone talked last year about how Wesley wanted to work to improve his shot. Kamau Stokes has done that this year. I mean, he's shooting 50% from three-point range, uh, five of six in the first half alone last night. So. He's scoring consistently. Barry Brown still isn't hitting the long range shots as well as he can. I mean, mm -hmm. he's getting a lot of his points off transition and, and defensive fast break opportunities. But, you know, he's a good shooter. He spends a lot of time in the gym. I think his, his shooting will improve. Dean Wade's, you know, taking more of the mid-range shots, but he can hit the three. So, yeah, there is some scoring out there. But, but, but Stokes right now, between him and Brown, I mean, his third year playing together, you know, that's, that's really a comfortable – guard tandem and, and Bruce Weber you know he'll probably catch heat for this but when we ask him about Kamal Stokes he keeps bringing up Frank Mason and he always brings <laughs> up I'm not comparing him to Frank Mason but you look at what they did as a freshman you know Kamal Stokes started as a freshman Frank mm -hmm. Mason didn't play that much got a lot better his sophomore year got a lot better his junior year and senior year so I mean that's the comparison he's making is how much Stokes has played and how he keeps improving his game you know, combining the scoring and distributing the ball. And now, now he's even learning to play a little defense, too. Well, if it's worth anything for the story I wrote for Hawkstone.com today, uh, Devontae Graham invoked Frank Mason when talking about Charlie Moore, a practice squad <laughs> player who's sitting out this year. So I don't think KU fans would have anything to gripe about for a comparison to yeah. Frank Mason. That seems to be the invoke guy to compare guys to. So. One of the more interesting aspects about K-State to me is this bench and – who Bruce Weber may decide to bring off the bench. And it seems to me he may have some choices in conference play where he might bring a guy off there who hasn't maybe played many minutes in, in a couple or three games. Uh, just based on, on what I'm seeing and, and what we saw last night, what we saw last night from the bench, a little bit different than what we saw, I thought, earlier in the year. It is. Well, he has some size that he can go to, but they, they have – he can go small. He can go big. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's the options he has now. I think uh, Ahmad Wainwright is going to keep getting better and better. I mean, he's coming in. He's hitting a, a shot here or two, but he'll go in and get a rebound and play a little defense. Uh, Cartier Jara, the freshman coming off an knee injury last year, is, is still learning, but you know he has some explosiveness to his game. So, and then you have Maldo Sala, the two big freshmen, Levi Stockard and Nigel Shad, who can come in and give you some size when you need that. So. 
I think that's the biggest thing. He has some versatility in how he can go big or small. And, you know, KU has not resorted yet to selling tickets for the end of its bench, I don't believe. But uh, <laughs> they've got they've got a, the deepest red squad in their history. And, yeah. And you yeah. wrote about that today and how it's it's helping the Jayhawks in practice. And, and it's a good point to make. I, I would think it has been. Yeah, even with uh, – you look at a guy like Billy Preston, who's not playing right now, sitting out indefinitely. He's missed – the first seven games of his KU career in the last six as they kind of look into the financial picture of a vehicle he was driving around on campus. Bill Self seemed hopeful that that would be resolved although sometime soon, although not by today, as he said. Uh, but, you know, that's that's something that how could it not help you? I mean, you have five Division One caliber players, a guy like Sam Cunliffe, who it will be playing for KU at, at the Nebraska game or will be eligible to play at least, um, a guy that's going to be giving the, the current lineup some depth. Uh, how could that not help? I mean, I just look at guys like uh, Diedrich Lawson, who averaged, I think, somewhere close to 20 and 10 last right, year yeah. for, Me yeah. for Memphis. I mean, that that's a heck of a performance. His brother, KJ, um, one of the best freshmen in uh, that conference last year. So I think it's it's a situation where going up against that, as Bill Self said, you know, they posted, I think, 30-plus points in 10 minutes of a running clock the other day against the starters, and uh, Devontae said that it kind of drove Bill Self nuts, but when you take a step back and you think about it, that can only make the defense of their regulars better, and I think we've seen that. I think KU's defense is further along than I anticipated, and although I'm not sure you would ever hear Bill Self say that, I think it has to be where uh, a little bit ahead of where KU fans expected. And, you know, something that's interesting, I asked Devontae Graham about this, uh, in situations like they have right now with the lack of depth and when Mitch Lightfoot and Yudoka Azubuki go to the bench in foul trouble, does that make KU more uh, urgent? Does it increase their sense of urgency, have them playing better defense? And he said, yeah, absolutely, because they know that there's no margin for error. Yeah. So I think, you know, whereas past teams, it's only natural to be playing some of these teams, these Texas Southerns, uh, you know, even Washington and I, who KU's a 20-plus point favorite over and maybe get lulled into a false sense of comfort, I guess. Yeah. KU has, I don't think at, to this point in the season, ever felt that way with only having seven active players really in their rotation, and sometimes only six when you consider foul trouble that they've had. So uh, it's it's certainly an interesting situation, and I think if you're looking for a silver lining of their depth problems, I think that would be it. It's, it's given them a heightened sense of urgency at a point in the season where few teams in the country I think would ever really have that. Have we looked into how long it took Rembrandt to paint a picture? Is this <laughs> yeah. taking as long as yeah? As what he They're just uh, you know looking at every document in every different way. It's like some kind of CS. I think yeah, some CSI investigations finish a lot faster than this. But you know it, it it's tough to interpret what that means, like what the holdup is. I'm sure that there is some kind of holdup along the way. But you know I think it's a situation where once KU determines what their appropriate disciplinary action would be for Billy Preston. I think that there would be some time served with that. I think that you'd look at everything that he's been held out of so far as a de facto suspension, but I don't think it's something that KU is going to do without first running the facts and the evidence of the case by the NCAA and saying, what do you think about this? This is what we're thinking about doing. What's your input? And the fact that KU has initiated this themselves and has kind of I guess, kickstarted and basically done the investigation for the NCAA, which is not always something that you want, is the the party at fault being the ones that run your investigation. But I think the NCAA will consider that a positive. And, you know, Bill Self was kind of asked about this, again, another story I wrote for Hawksun.com this week, how it compares to past situations. And you would think the uh, situation with Josh Selby might be a, a similar situation, the Darnell Jackson situation, which mm -hmm. I looked back and saw you wrote about at the time back in the mid-2000s. <laughs> um, I think that those are two comparable situations, and both of those guys set out nine games, but Self was quick to say, you know, any speculation that this might just be a semester sit-out for Preston that's just going without, you know, being called that, he kind of said that he doesn't think that that's how this situation, he's not compatible at all, I think was, I think I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, well, similar. And, in that and the thing is, too, if the NCAA is involved in any way, shape, or form. I mean, I mean, you have to think, you know, KU's obviously communicated with them. Then that's something that's going to take time, too, because that's an organization that mm -hmm. does nothing yeah. with any immediacy. And if it is an impermissible benefit situation, it's worth mentioning that Selby and Jackson both had to pay their impermissible benefits back over time to charity. So uh, 
you know, there is precedent for this, but Self did say that this is being handled unlike any that he's had in his time at KU, and whether that's, you know, if you want to speculate whether that's because of the heightened paranoia of some of these universities and compliance departments because of the ongoing FBI investigation into college basketball, you can you can make that judgment. But uh, yeah, I encourage guys and girls, really everybody, to go check that story out and see what Bill Self had to say about it because it's interesting. After what he said at Kentucky, you were there. Or uh, in Chicago, after they played Kentucky, he said sooner rather than later. Yeah, which is and I mean we're getting to the point where it's later yeah. now mm -hmm. uh, in their exactly. season. So yeah, uh, but I, I do think he is feeling hopeful that it's a situation that will reach a conclusion here shortly. Ken, like you said, I mean this is a, quote neutral court week for each of these teams. KU always plays in Sprint Center. K State takes its act down to Wichita is. Is that a good place for K-State? I've been to some of those games in the past, and they seem to have drawn okay. Uh, what do you think about that venue as one that's kind of a, you know, quote, neutral neutral side, but one that K-State goes to regularly? Yeah, they, we asked Bruce about that last night. He considers it a home game, just like he wants, yeah. wants the NCAA to consider their game against Washington State and Spokane a home game for Washington State. But, yeah, I think it's good. You know, they alternate, you know, in Wichita one year, Sprint Center, Kansas City one year play. And they take their act on the road. So, you know, Tulsa, you know, I think that's probably a good matchup. I don't know how well Tulsa will travel, you know, with their fans, but it's an easy trip for them to come up. So, you know, it's, I think once every other year, it's a, it's a good show for, you know, there's a strong Wildcat club in Wichita. So, mm -hmm. you get them a chance. And, and it gives K State a chance to play in an NCAA type environment when that, when that arena is going to host some postseason games. So, yeah, it's just nothing bad that can come out of it. I, it's, Sorry to cut you off. It's worth mentioning Bill Self was asked this week on his Hawk Talk radio program by a Wichita fan, when are you guys going to come down and play here? Because we you have a lot of fans in Wichita that would like to see you here at mm -hmm. uh, Intrust, right? Yeah, right? And uh, he said, well, I hope as soon as this spring <laughs> we'll yeah. have a couple of games <laughs> right. up there. So yeah. he kind of danced but, around it a little bit, but that but was his way of answering do, that. I think it would be good for Kansas because last I looked, it says Kansas right here yeah, yeah, yeah. to play in Wichita, and particularly maybe this year where, you know, you've got your first and second round games mm -hmm. in, in that building. Uh, yeah. And it seats 15,000. It's not as big as Sprint Center, but uh, I guarantee you the Jayhawks would, would fill it against anyone they, they, they play. They would, and then the white elephant in the room then is, why not Wichita State? If you're yeah, coming exactly, down yeah. here, why not play for yeah. both of them, both KU and mm -hmm. K-State, why yeah. not Wichita State? Which that that's the way it should be. And, yeah. and from what you understand, Kevin, would there be any political hurdles that they would have to? I mean, would anybody in Wichita say, "No, you're not coming to play here unless you're playing Wichita State"? No, I don't think so. I think there was a deal out there a few years ago where there was a possibility of playing USC in the in the downtown arena in Wichita, and then that that fell through for whatever reason. But uh, I, I don't I don't think so. I mean, obviously, Kansas State's been able to schedule a conference rival now, a long time Missouri Valley rival, but now a rival in the American in, in Tulsa mm -hmm. and so and doing that in Wichita and, and that irritated well, some Wichita State fans when, when that game was announced, I know. But uh, Wichita State just went down and played beat one at Baylor. They're yeah. playing the are they playing Oklahoma well, State this year. I mean so they the, they are playing they three twelve teams. Three big twelve teams and they have Oklahoma coming into the the one game Wichita State's playing downtown right. will be against OU, and I really think the Wichita State will start using that arena a little bit more, too, mm -hmm. if crowds with these rivalries that develop within the American Conference get to be big oh, right. enough. Yeah, uh, you're bringing a, that, a UConn or mm -hmm. yeah, like that. Yeah, so, yeah. and uh, maybe even UConn women, who knows. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's, there's going to be some opportunities there probably for them to also shift some games downtown just to draw about hmm, four or five thousand more yeah more fans i mean obviously i'd love to see a wichita state ku or k-state game i think it would be good i think uh you know wichita state certainly is at a level now with greg marshall where it'd be a competitive game if if not a really tough game obviously for k-state and even mm -hmm. for even for ku but you know i yeah, scheduling is a is an odd thing, and and I know after Wichita State won against Kansas, 
in the NCAA tournament, Marshall kind of said, well, yeah, we got our one game. So. <laughs> well, it's bragging rights you know, now yeah, that they can I hold mean, over their head indefinitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so. if K-State, you know, they're getting, you know, three or 4,000 people in, in Bramlage to watch South Carolina Upstate and Northern Arizona. I mean, there's no reason not to get Wichita State into Bramlage and play, mm-hmm. play a home-and-home. Home. Yeah. So. Or home and home, or something to do with a you know playing an in trust, and you yeah. maybe even split the gate strong. there and, exactly. and have a half yeah. and half draw. It, they, it's a, it can only benefit both both programs prestige wise, and can only benefit the fans yeah. if you're doing stuff for the fans. And I'm sure the players, you know, I, I'm sure K State players would love to play Wichita State. No, I do too. I, I think so you too. Know, so. I, I think, and I don't know, K State players probably aren't saying this kind of thing, but I would sure, especially those juniors. Would rather have a schedule this 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 year that's a little yes, more challenging absolutely. than this. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you know, they're they're ready for that, and mm-hmm. and I think the Wildcats definitely want to show people that they're better than what they were predicted to finish in the in the Big Twelve and have the potential to do so. Right. So, but anyway, okay, soapbox is uh, been <laughs> cleared, and, and that's uh, that's it for this week. Um, we invite you to follow. Follow us anywhere you can. We have catzone.com, hogzone.com on CJ Online, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, We appreciate you tuning in, and we'll be back again hopefully next week. Thanks.